our next speaker is a big GC favorite, and he, I, I'm sure we'll tell this story, but the last time he spoke at Civics Day, he actually used one of the, the issues that a class talked about uh, to implement a bill in, in Boston. Um, so he's a living example of how students can make change. So this is Council Member Felix Arroyo, who was elected to the body of Boston City Council in November of 2009. He's a lifelong Bostonian, born in the South End, raised in Hyde Park, and a proud graduate of Boston Public Schools. So without further ado, Council Member Arroyo. Good morning, everybody. I said good morning, everyone. Shout out to an extremely close friend of mine, someone who I, I see as a friend, but also as a mentor and longer serving woman in the House of Representatives, and that's Gloria Fox, who's sitting right here uh, in the front row. And um, just know that I'm not going to tell you how old she is, but I did say she's the longer serving woman in the State House. I might have been, I was certainly longer than, younger than you guys when I met her, and I can tell you that she does listen to young people and takes their ideas and moves with them. So the story I'll share is one of um, it is actually true that a young person can make a difference in their society and in their community. I'll go with a much more macro picture. I'm sometimes amazed when I bring up, when I say the word SNCC, and how many people don't know what that is, but that stands for the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. Everybody here, I'm sure, knows of the Civil Rights Movement, right? I'm sure you learned about that. You probably learned about Dr. King, maybe Rosa Parks but you certainly had touched the subject at some point. Often what's unsaid and forgotten is that the, the feats on the ground in that movement were often as young as 12 years old. As young as 12 years old. And they formed a group called the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 years old. Anybody in this room, anywhere in that age group? between the ages of 12 and 17. That age group was a key component in bringing us the civil rights that so many of us cherish today. Frankly, I believe, because that age group, a Puerto Rican kid from Hyde Park, Massachusetts, can be an at large city council in the city of Boston. And so don't ever think that because of your age, you can't make a difference because in one of the most remarkable people-led movement in this country's history, there was people your age that played a key part in that change. And I'll talk about what happened to me a year ago when I showed up here. A year ago, uh, you were in the building in another room. I ran in because I support youth work and I wanted, you know, just to show my support of young people. I got there just in time to listen to some of the reports of some of the projects that young people were working on and what they wanted to see in their community. No offense to anybody not from Boston, but because I am from Boston, I paid special and close attention to the young lady who was introduced as a student of the Boston Arts Academy, a school my brother graduated from. And she spoke about something to me that was Every now and then, someone has an idea that makes so much sense that you try to figure out why it hasn't been happening before. And she simply said, we would like to see recycling in our schools so that when we've done eating food in the cafeteria and we have this bottle here, instead of sticking it in the regular trash, we could just stick it in the recycle bin. Some schools let you eat in the classroom and they thought, you know, we'd like to throw it in the recycle bin, not the trash can. And then I started to think more and I thought, boy, wouldn't that be great, especially since all of our behaviors are learned behaviors. So if you start with a young person in the first grade, recycling will become such a habitual thing that by the time they're an adult, it's as if they knew no other thing, as if that's what there is to do. So I said, well, that's a pretty good idea. I got up, put myself in a position sometimes politicians put themselves in, and I said, that's a great idea. I'm going to do something about it. And the minute it came out of my mouth, I said, man, I better do something about that. Because <laughs> I just said I would. And it take you here. <laughs> so we filed a hearing order on the subject. We visited Nadia at her school at the Boston Arts Academy. We took a tour of the school, had ideas about where she thought these things could be. 
had a hearing at City Hall. Uh, Generation Citizens, Jillian's here, participated in that hearing. Uh, Nadia couldn't because I think she was at a dance practice or a dance recital, something to do with her art. Remember, she was at the Boston Arts Academy. Uh, long story short, today in the Boston Public Schools, are, we recycle in every single school in the city. And I can tell you that the, the person who put that idea <laughs> Second, young people can indeed make change. Third, don't ever be too shy to voice your idea. Don't ever be too shy to put your thoughts out in the air. Because if you keep it all inside, I can assure you nothing will ever change. Nothing will ever happen. Put it out there. And when you're around people who you think can help you in any way, never be too ashamed to that's the only way any of us get anywhere. I wouldn't be who I was if there weren't thousands of people who helped me, some of them I don't know. And so every single one of you, I just say that. Don't be too afraid of your own ideas, of following that idea, of seeing it in action, and seeing where it goes, and never be too ashamed to ask somebody about it. Never. Contrary to popular belief, nobody. I've never met a single person who could do it on their own. So thank you for your time, uh, thank you for having me, and thank you for the work you do as young people and generation citizens, thank you for the work you do.